Okay, I'm ready. Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is the second lecture on the final project. On Tuesday, I introduced the format, the methodology. I illustrated most of the contents of the special page where you find suggestions, a quasi-template for the cataloging of the short stories to be included in the final project, you also find the sources that are allowed for this kind of project, which involves some archival research inside digital archives, in the archives of journals and magazines in the early 1900s. That's where you're supposed to find short stories on the automobile. That's the most important thing to remember. It's not google.com and then automobile and going from there because uh, that wouldn't be real research. Today I'm going to engage in an activity on the project that we will do in groups. We will try to work together on the first example I provided on the page for Bloomer's new auto in such a way that together we try to fill up the information that one would be expected to provide about a short story such as this so that you have a working example by the end uh, of this and after my review of the feedback of the contributions uh, by the class you have something that you can refer to later on when you'll be working on the project more intensely however keep in mind that the reason why i have introduced the uh, final the details of the final project halfway through the semester as we are is that clearly especially because you need to find the material to be working on this is not the kind of project you can embark the very night of the deadline at the last moment also because the sooner you start looking for material and the easier it will be for you to simply send me links or come and see me to review your choices because in many ways a lot of the value of your project will depend on how good and relevant and pertinent the examples you will find are okay so after the activity the second half of the class we will spend uh, uh, doing some video watching um, the first thing, as promised, we were watching the finale, the conclusion of Christine, but we never got really to the very end. So we have a few minutes from the end of Christine uh, that was, was waiting for us to, to catch up with. Then we will go back to the silent films to watch uh, more uh, from the selection in that page, silent movies about the automobile with some interesting examples of the magical powers of the automobile, the redefinition of space and time by the automobile through the interaction with the automobile, the interaction with reality altogether uh, being uh, uh, reframed uh, thanks to the adoption of this new technology. Okay, so I'll tell you how we will proceed uh, and, and then we will uh, create groups and assign tasks because different groups will be working on different things. Just, just follow and ask questions to make sure you know what you're uh, doing and what you're working on. So we will be working on example number one. Example number one will be the only one for today's work otherwise we kind of put together and have one full template filled up so make sure you can find on your computer your phone uh, this page and click on this link to proceed and on this page you will also find several recommendations and more importantly the template And 
will go through the various, various parts. So the first section of the template is a complete bibliographical reference together with a clickable link that takes to the beginning of the story, possibly some information about the author and a quick definition of the style and genre. Since this is the simplest section, we'll have just a small group with only two or three people working on this section. So after we decide the groups, I will assign that to just one group. The next section, especially for a short story such as the one we're working on, requires more work and therefore more people. And this time we can have multiple groups. We can have uh, two or three groups working on it. The idea is to include in the synopsis all the relevant details with special for with a special focus on the role of the automobile in the story. So, for example, in this case, it would be easy to write a very short synopsis saying a couple but purchases an automobile, they have various mechanical issues, and at the end of the story, they decide to sell the automobile and not continue its use. This, of course, is a valid summary of the story, but it omits all the interesting details that would then support the decision of which quotes should be included and also the analysis of the story. So we need a more detailed synopsis with all the various stages in the story. The fact that the husband is the one coming back to the house with the news of his latest purchase. And the fact, for example, that this news provokes a skeptical reaction by the wife or the fact that the husband declares that he now identifies as someone who has a mechanical mind and further on there is a reference to the fact that this new mechanical twist in his life will provide him with entertainment meaning that there is some intellectual aspect to the use the adoption and the use of this technology, okay? So, don't make this too long. I would say at most one page or 300 words or so, but I wouldn't see this be shorter than 100 words and even 100 words might not be enough. The next section can also be worked on by at least a couple of groups identify all the relevant quotes and this time we mean quotes where the language is such that it is suggestive of interesting representations of the automotive technology this would include for example all the references to the enthusiasm of the husband for the automobile or the description of the experience of their first and last experience of the car uh, and the description of speed. Passages where they, the, the, the narration refers to the hypnotic effect the car has on the man, for example, etc. The next section also can be done by a couple of groups, depending on how many groups we have, of course, and that would be the analysis of the story. By analysis of the story, you have, again, two options and you can uh, embrace both to an extent, and that would be to identify the themes or the thematic and narrative patterns in the story. And I already <coughs> suggested how in this story, a lot of these elements are being represented, such you, you do find elements of anticipation and fascination you do find this element of rapture and there is the element of 
not abduction, but definitely loss of control and, and the threat of uh, uh, destruction. And at the end, you do have the couple deciding to separate themselves from the technology. Okay, so there is no before and after in this case because their life is not changed since they decide to get rid of the car. It's not like we can define their trajectory uh, from a fictional point of view as their life as it was before this purchase and how it changed afterwards. At the same time, besides the themes, you can also go back to the language of the story and provide a detailed analysis. So in, in the part where you have uh, the, the quotes, that section will only have quotes with references, meaning page numbers. But this time in the analysis, you can go back to some of the quotes you have included in the previous sections and explain their relevance. Why are they relevant for our understanding of the representation of this technology in the society of that time. Okay, okay so if I can have your attention. This is all the time we have for the activity. As I said, even if you're not done, simply paste inside the shared document, whatever you, your group is done, okay? We did have a limited amount of time we just wanted to further our understanding of the project and then next week, next Thursday, I will review what you have posted and offered my commentary to give you more directions and give you an opportunity to ask questions. Right now, though, we have to switch and go back to the videos and the film because we have barely enough time to see, to cover today's program. When we watched Christine the second time, there wasn't enough time to see the actual conclusion, which is interesting because one of the criteria we can look at narratives on screen or on the page related to the fears and the fascination with the automobile is looking at the before and after. The before is plenty clear because we had this nerd, uh, this, this loser of a character who seems to be on a trajectory towards success, but then in fact, in the second half of the film, becomes virtually enslaved to the evil intentions of the car, becomes simply an extension or a minion, or even you could say the car and army become one and, and they share the same evil plans. But more importantly, what you'll see in the conclusion is that the world as it is, society as it is, is not the same after the story because the machine is destroyed. Apparently, as you've seen, as you've seen happen in, let's say, for example, Jules Verne's stories, but not destroyed for good. For one thing, this has introduced this possibility that technologies are not inanimate. But the other thing is that the car itself, although uh, reduced to a block of metal, the spirit of the car is still there together with its ability to modify its shape, get back into the shape of a car to be then uh, adopted by the next unsuspected customer and that's important for the before and after so approximately I don't remember exactly but my recollection is that um, we saw Lee uh, being attacked by Christine and now we watch the rest of the scene until the destruction of Christine so we go back to silent films about the car. And initially, several directors in Europe especially came to cinema, not just from theater, which you would normally expect, but more specifically, they were involved 
in stage productions of magic shows. And therefore, they found it um, interesting and productive and, and uh, useful for their success to make films based primarily on tricks or special effects. And a trick movie based on the categories of this time is a movie where you have some effect of magic and wonder produced mostly through editing. Editing that by 1906-1907 was done so in such a refined way that sometimes you don't even see where the film was stopped, as we will see in the case of the next one. A human was replaced by a puppet to produce the effect of someone being actually run over by a car, which was a dramatic effect by the standards of the viewers of the time. So before I show you the question mark motorist or the mad motorist, those are the titles of this film, I want to show you previous productions by the same director, Booth, to give you a sense of the techniques and the effects that we're looking for, which at some point were then applied to the use of the automobile. I've included uh, links to various YouTube videos. Of course, let me know if some of those videos disappear because it does happen. So look at, for example, this undressing extraordinary from 1901. What you'll see is someone going back to their bedroom trying to undress the, the character is drunk, he is trying to undress to go in bed, but every time he takes off his clothes, he finds himself fully clothed in some kind of costume. And um, the, the film has a weird pace. It's almost uh, obsessive, right? It, it's almost too much to, to see this poor man trying to finally get to the bed, but cannot get there because some external supernatural force is dressing him up again. Very short, right? These videos were shown in batches, right? There were multiple features when people went to the theater. Also, very common during this period, hybrid shows where there would be shows, singing, comedy, other kinds of shows on the stage, and in between those shows, they would show short films. Okay, so a combination. And uh, as you probably all know, uh, these films had live music, and sometimes, I don't remember if that's the case here in today's videos, they put the music on, but it's added, it's not part of the soundtrack. We've lost the music, often we've lost the score, sometimes the music was improvised, but don't believe that they always have the same kind of silly music you, you usually find attached to these videos. They were being more creative. Okay, so I'm dressing extraordinary. And everything you see in here was produced through editing, right? And it's done very well, not as well as in other films later on, but well enough. You barely see where the next uh, frames were attached. And it goes on and on, right? It's, it's very, uh, there is an excessive amplification of the trick. It never stops, just goes on and on. But again, the reaction was much stronger in the viewers of the time, who probably start laughing and continue laughing through the, the film. Some have a different reaction filled for the poor man. Very theatrical, the set, right? The mise-en-scene, the, the background, etc. It's very similar to what you would have found in a theater during that time. And again, I'm showing this just for you to appreciate the genre of trick films and the use of editing. There is no reference to the automobile in this one, 
but the technique is the same that you'll see used in other films. It never stops, and this is just halfway through. Finally, oh, I can go to bed. And the right kind of costume is imposed on him. Yes. And then using the same editing, you have this Halloweeny part. skeleton turns into a chair, but it's just a celebration of editing techniques. It was like filmed at a later date of like 1928. <laughs> oh, the other thing that must be said is that you usually see this, these films with a frantic pace, but they were not necessarily shot like that. And sometimes you have to slow down the YouTube video because there is this assumption or belief that all these movies were on a faster pace. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes they were faster, sometimes they were slower because that could be adjusted during the projection. And that was the first example. A video, a shorter example, where you have an accident, but not with a car, with a carriage, with a carriage running over someone and of course you see this live as if it were this dramatic event, but at some point you can see how the human, the actor is replaced by a puppet, then the puppet is replaced again by a human. You can go for it. So here we have two years later, extraordinary cab accident. Cab was also not just a taxi cab, but a carriage for hire. And, and you can see, of course, that the actor was replaced. The music is just random, not original. Well, it does from the head in this school. I thought it was like for the. Like, I thought they tried to do something for the head. Let's hope not. And. In, in one minute, in two minutes, you need to have all the drama, right? All the surprises, he's not dead. And that's it, right? And people would laugh and move on to the next part of the show. It sounds like someone broken into your squeeze box. <laughs> and now we have the, this, this very famous film. Of course, there were plenty more, and, and the selection is for us is limited to what has survived, but this gives you a great sense of the automobile as an instrument that redefines the interaction with the world and the sense of space. There is no limit and also to where you can go and also this idea that with an automobile, the dimensions of your life are dramatically changed. So it starts with just a couple that runs over a policeman that is trying to give them a ticket, but then it becomes fantastic or surreal with them going into the sky, into space, coming back, etc. Saturn. 
Why not? But this was quite successful. Quite a production for the time. Some of this is done with stop motion, <coughs> taking multiple pictures of the model after you lower the wire. Painted backgrounds, for the most part, like they did in theater. And this is a court judging a motorist. You recognize it's a motorist because of the fur. So someone else is talking about a fine with the policeman. And wait, because they'll be crashing down. And there we are. And that was the superimposition of two films on top of each other. Here, too, some magic transformations. Now it's a car. But when the police comes to arrest them, eh, it's a carriage. You cannot arrest me. I have a horse. You've got the wrong person. And then it turns into a car again. And that's it. As I said, this was successful enough that uh, Later on, Booth redid that in a longer film of about six minutes with basically the same elements, the car traveling through space, going to Saturn, the magical adventures, and this was called the automatic motorist. So there is a, an inventor who has invented this robot Who's a driver? Right? And there is this couple, married couple, who will engage the mechanical driver to be their chauffeur. And they'll have this trip through space. And again, notice the painted background, theatrical style. Of course, you have an actor with. with costume, moving like robot. You can find all these cars, there is a website, it's IMCDB. The same way there is a website for films, IMDB, there is one for cars in movies, where you can go type the title and they will tell you what kind of car this one is. Here they start, and it's a mix of fantasy, drama, comedy, course if you see a policeman you can see you can imagine what will happen to the character was that speed considered speeding back yes and speed was assessed by policemen without any instruments so it could be very arbitrary so they decide why not tie the cop to the back of the of the car and, and drive away and you have the usual transformation of the human actor into a puppet, done with editing. As soon as they go out, now it's easy to spot that they are now using a puppet, reproducing the, the, the human and the dog. Just completely removed his back legs. Yeah, they're not... Fluffy enough, that's the issue. Yeah. And now, here they go, and you can recognize the style of the director, same director as the previous one. He added more details now, right? It's more refined, for example. The moon is now a face that changes. Saturn uh, is, is more elaborate. And now they will go into the planet to discover Characters like the ones you find the Wizard of Oz living inside the planet. And even the policeman will have it, his moment in there on that planet. It's like a Pelican g -Mod car. Here we are. The jolly people living inside the planet. In this case, no music was added to the video, but you can imagine in the theater, someone would play the piano or even other instruments. Finally, the policeman is free. 
and the policeman has its own episode in the story. First being captured by the little Saturnians and then finding love. It's like they, they want to throw him off the planet. And now a fairy appears again, using editing to make something, someone appear. And Meanwhile, the couple with the car driven by the robot are going through the planet and then falling back to Earth. <clears throat> this is the superimposition of an image on another scroll of film. They go back to Earth, but then they go down themselves. into this subterranean ocean with creatures. And again, it's the superimposition of different films that are being shot again. You find this iguana-like creatures, bubbles, etc. And since they went all the way down, why not have them go back up? Some kind of electromagnetic storm. Remember, by this time there were multiple narratives about going into the Earth moving into the planet <clears throat> and now they've been shot into the sky and they come down because a hunter shoots them from the sky first the bride the inventor and now the groom and of course the experience was exciting but not entirely positive for them. 